Hi, my name is Bernie Wagenblast, your moderator for today's panel discussion, brought to you by Opticom Traffic Signal Priority Control Solutions. Before we get started, we'd like to welcome the transportation personnel who are listening today. As the editor of the Transportation Communications Newsletter, a former New York City DOT and Port Authority of New York and New Jersey employee, as well as being a New York City uh, traffic reporter, I've spent my entire career working with DOT personnel and understanding how complex the world of transportation management has become over the years. From a citizen's point of view, we all see the massive road construction projects going on around us, but even more overwhelming is the art and science of managing the traffic signal operations to ensure traffic runs smoothly, emergency personnel are responding quickly, transit stays on schedule, and that our intersections are being maintained in the most efficient and effective ways. The extensive thought processes and long-range planning teams involved, compound it with the challenge to find available funding to keep our traffic systems updated in a troubled economy, makes this discussion an interesting one for all municipalities going through these types of challenges themselves. Today, we're excited to have a group of panel members who will be discussing the forward thinking the city of Olathe, Kansas has done around bringing intelligent software to their city's traffic signal priority control system and how a successful implementation changes everything for the traffic division for the better. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panel. Like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, you may not be in Kansas, but today's keynote panel member is. His name is David Kumke, Traffic Signal Operations Supervisor for the City of Olathe, Kansas, and President-elect of IMSA, the International Municipal Signal Association. Welcome, David. Thank you. Next, we have Dan Wright, owner of MidAmerican Signal, whose company assisted the City of Olathe with the implementation of the project. His input on the City's requirements and project timeline will give us an interesting perspective to better understand what agencies and their vendors need to think about when planning for a smooth implementation. It's good to have you here, Dan. Thank you. Glad to be here. And our third panel member represents the research and development perspective to design traffic signal priority control hardware and software that meets and or exceeds requirements for state and local agencies. I'd like to welcome Jim Malmati, Senior System Software Engineer for Global Traffic Technologies, manufacturer of Opticom, the leader in traffic signal priority control solutions. Welcome, Jim. Thanks, Bernie. We'll be breaking up today's discussion into three segments. The first, planning for preemption. The second, the implementation phase. And finally, our third segment, looking back and to the future. Let's get right to our first segment, planning for preemption. David, for those of us who aren't familiar with it, would you please describe the city of Olathe, Kansas? Sure, Bernie. Um, the name Olathe is actually a Shawnee Indian word meaning beautiful, although I wouldn't recommend trying that on your significant other. I tried <laughs> it and it didn't work so well. Um, but we are the second largest among 21 communities in Johnson County and the fourth largest uh, city in the state. We're located approximately 20 miles southwest of downtown Kansas City. And from our earliest beginnings, we were a transportation hub, so to speak. Our life is located where the historic Oregon, California, and Santa Fe trails cross. We have a population of about 125,000 people. I personally work within the traffic division, which operates as part of the public works department. And we've been very fortunate to have some forward-looking leadership here in Olathe. Um, there's a culture here that enables us to be on the leading edge of our professions. In fact, we're encouraged to be innovators and take risk. And this really enables us to work with some of the latest systems with the goal of increasing efficiencies, improving functional operations within the TOC and the ATMS system. Some of the items we've been working with include controller firmware, signal system software, Ethernet-based battery backup systems, network communications, and microwave detection systems. Being early adopters of different systems really has allowed us to be part of the solution and working with the manufacturers by suggesting or validating features or functions with their equipment. Our existing ATMS system affords us the opportunity to deploy and test some of the more leading edge technologies. Now, David, what are some of the biggest challenges that the traffic division in Olathe is facing today? Well, Bernie, if you would have asked me that question four or five years ago, I would have said it would have been keeping up with the uh, growing transportation needs of our community. Uh, for several years, we were the fastest growing city in the state. However, because of the economy, things have shifted. And now due, uh, due to that, the revenue difficulties that all municipalities are feeling, our focus is really more on maximizing uh, efficiencies on existing systems and trying to maintain a high service levels. 
which means we have to look for ways to do things smarter. Uh, the old adage of doing more with less is, is an axiom that uh, government uses a lot lately. Well, no doubt you've been very busy over the past decade or so, but can you give us a, a brief background of what some of the major projects the Olathe Traffic Division has been implementing over the past decade or so? Sure. Um, our ATMS system has been uh, a long time in the making, actually. We started from concept to acquiring funding and then into the design phase during the late 1990s. There was a lull in the action while trying to secure funding for the construction phases of the project, so after so much time had passed, really uh, the leading edge had changed a little bit. We originally started with a sonnet ring uh, topology for our network, and by the time uh, we had funding for construction, Ethernet was starting to be more available in the traffic signal systems. So we had to make a last-minute uh, change to adapt to that. We wanted to be on the edge of that system, and uh, we... For implementation, the system took four separate construction phases. We began in 2004, and the final phase was completed last year. Currently, about 98% of all of our traffic signals are on our system. Um, we were also a partnering agency in Operation Greenlight. They're a working group of our MPO, the Mid-America Regional Council. There's 26 partner agencies uh, spanning across state lines. This was really a regional approach to moving traffic. Originally, we formed to ensure good progression from city to city and also trying to lower emissions, and it grew to include kind of a regional approach for our traffic, uh, traffic system software. So the partnering agents, agencies from the Kansas City region met to develop requirements. We had to assess needs and challenges of the various cities. And then ultimately, uh, we met to select a traffic signal system software that met our needs. Well, David, that gives us a, a good background of what's going on in Olathe. Dan, maybe you can tell us now how your company became involved with Olathe in the beginning and what some of the changes that were happening in the industry have been. Sure, Bernie. Well, for, Olathe has been a customer of ours for many, many years, and we've provided a variety of uh, products, um, one of these being Opticom for the local intersections. Um, early on, 3M owned uh, the Opticom product, and, and that was their brand. And it spun off and became uh, Global Traffic Technologies, or GTT. GTT developed and released the uh, control management software, or the CMS software, and Olathe was one of the first to adopt and install the system. Now, we've been talking about preemption hardware. What exactly is preemption hardware, and what does this central management software do? Well, well, in this case, uh, the preemption software hardware that uh, Olathe uses consists of an uh, emitter on an emergency vehicle, a uh, detector located out on the mast arm of the traffic signal pole, and a face selector located in the traffic signal cabinet. Uh, these devices are used to optimize the response time uh, for an emergency vehicle and a call. The central management system software gives the traffic department the ability to observe the intersection equipment, monitor the call activity at the intersection, and generate alerts and reports. Uh, this helps maintain a high level of performance for the safety of the uh, vehicles that, are, that use the system. Jim, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, uh, this is Jim Alnati from Global Traffic Technologies, or GTT. I mean, what uh, Dan and David have described is a, a wonderful, reliable system, but, you know, with any system that has components, you really need to have a view of what's happening inside your system at a very deep level. And this is exactly what CMS is for. Uh, the central management software gives you this view of the system. Now, the best way to describe it is what it used to be and what it is today. It was a nightly polling of these components that would drive reports. So it was an offline reporting utility that, you know, uh, David would use to look at his uh, statistics, and that was good, but it was excellent users like him, him and others that uh, pushed us to make it more dynamic and, in fact, real-time. So what we have today with this brand new release is really a game-changing capability that makes it a real-time monitoring system. So on a very regular basis, uh, we're pulling the face selectors, looking for preemption calls, uh, pieces that are not working anymore, like, uh, say, an infrared detector, and we're alerting the, uh, the people in the TMC. Now, the Traffic Management Center is a perfect place for this. But we can go beyond that because if you have just a visual display, that's pretty good. I mean, people are watching it, but what if you're a signal tech out in the field and suddenly a detector goes bad on the other side of town? Well, CMS can actually send uh, text messages or email to people's Blackberries, let's say, 
uh, the signal technician in the field can see that they've got a problem and get over and fix it immediately. And this really has changed things because it used to be that people would have maybe a, an annual maintenance plan. Uh, that's good, but on a yearly basis, you're going to miss equipment, and it's going to sit there for a long time before it's found. Now we have a dynamic way of seeing what's going on behind the scenes. Well, with all this, I, I certainly understand, David, why the responders need the green signal, but what were the, the key reasons that you started looking at the software? Well, it's offered, you know, it's really offered us some opportunities to more effectively operate and maintain the equipment we have in the field. But not only that, it's the information, such as encoding schemes, the usage logs, uh, timestamp functions. You know, now from the TOC, we can communicate directly with the equipment utilizing our ATMS network. We can monitor, or troubleshoot, and maintain a high degree of uh, operational uptime, which is important to us. Um, and it's important to our fire medic personnel as well. In their business, you know, every second counts, and, and delays could cause loss of property or even life. And I've personally experienced this riding in the ambulance with my son from the point of uh, pickup all the way uh, to the hospital. We traveled through several uh, different heavily ca uh, traveled corridors, and we never had to stop for a red light. And so that, that there's a lot of value in that, and I've personally experienced it. But the features of the software has really saved us a significant amount of time and maintenance. We used to need to rely, just like Jim had talked about, on Fire and MedAct contacting us to let us know how, if a particular direct or detector wasn't working or checking that all of our preemption for proper operation was done also as part of our annual preventive maintenance plan. But now the system monitors detector noise for levels that can indicate a problem, and then they're displayed in the category. Like Jim said, they could be emailed out to uh, technicians in the field, and when we installed the version with this feature, we were immediately able to detect and repair six problem detectors within the first day that without the system, we probably wouldn't have been aware of. Um, we can also view activity at each location so we can dispatch a technician, and all they have to do is turn on their emitter and drive that particular direction. You don't need a second tech at the cabinet to verify the discriminators are working properly anymore. The activity screen tells us the encoded transmitter information intensity levels, making troubleshooting much more efficient. And the active monitoring feature lets us know what intersections are being preempted, including direction, user, vehicle ID, and time, because we've all sat and probably experienced the negative side effects of preemption, and that is for the rest of the drivers. Um, I know I personally sat there and you, and you waited at a traffic signal and you wonder what's going on and you got skipped or something's going on. Well, we get a lot of phone calls here at the TLC regarding those, those type of usage issues, and we're able to actually look at the system and figure out if that was the issue and communicate that effectively to our citizens. Well, now that we have a better understanding about some of the issues that were involved with this and the planning that went into it as well, I'd like to move into the second segment, talking about the implementation phase. And maybe the best way to start off is to ask you, David, again, about how you went about the implementing the central management software in Olathe in the first place. Sure. Um, the, the implementation was really pretty straightforward. Uh, we approached this by kind of evaluating the high-use corridors and, and then including the, tram, the existing transit routes as part of our criteria. Uh, because of limited funding, though, we decided the initial deployment would consist of about 75 intersections, and the CMS system actually would will only work with the 700 series discriminator, so we had quite a few of the 500 series that we had to swap out in different locations or purchase new ones. The discriminators utilize the serial communications at this point or at the time we implemented, so we had to also purchase serial to Ethernet converters um, at the locations that would allow connectivity to our ATMS system, which is Ethernet-based. And then the technicians in the field also wired up the green sense wiring harnesses, and they were installed really to inform the discriminator of what phases or directions of the intersection were green and exactly what time. This portion is important for, for use in liability cases and also for future transit usage. Now, every city has its own unique attributes and, and circumstances, but for the city of Olathe, what factors, if any, did you have to plan around, uh, consider, or make adjustments for? Well, we didn't have any inherent to the city itself. Uh, the one problem we did run into initially was um, when Dave Johnson came down and installed the system software on one of our existing servers at the TOC, right out of the box we had some communication issues that's centered around the interface cables between the serial to Ethernet device and the discriminators. 
And while some of the cables worked, others didn't seem to, so it wasn't very consistent. So we decided to address the cable issue before any more integration efforts would continue. And then once new cables were tested and deployed, they came back down and everything went really very well. Encouraging. Obviously, when you're doing something like this, you're not working in a vacuum. There are other agencies that you have to work with to implement. What other agencies uh, did you have to work with to, to, to involve the implementation, and, and why did you have to work with them? Well, we, we coordinated with our fire and EMS, and because we had to collect all the information regarding encoding numbers and their associated vehicle information, that all gets put into the system as well. And then we, we par partnered with our vehicle maintenance group who test the existing emitters as part of the vehicle's preventive maintenance checks and log necessary information. And they're also responsible for uh, deploying new emitters on new vehicles. So those are our, two part our three partners, actually, that we worked with. Now, looking back over that, that implementation that you went through, how would you characterize it? Uh, I'm sure everything was absolutely perfect. There were absolutely no problems, and it went exactly according to plan, or is that not exactly right? <laughs> well, you're pretty close, Barry. I mean, <laughs> other than the cable issue, uh, everything did go very smoothly. Um, the staff uh, for GTT came down and very knowledgeable, and, and uh, once we had the cables figured out, everything went very, very well, and I was very uh, surprised by how well the system ran, how easy it was to install the client software and the system software. Jim uh, or Dan, what about uh, from your perspectives? Well, I couldn't give uh, Dave and his uh, staff um, any higher grades. I think his um, uh, technicians are top quality, and I think it was due to a lot of the, their efforts that the system um, went in as, as easily, if you will, as it has. Um, a smooth transition into these systems usually is not uh, the easiest thing to do. And uh, like I said, I think Dave and his technicians did an outstanding job. Uh, so I give them high, uh, high marks for that. As far as um, did it go smoothly, uh, yes, quite, quite smoothly. And my expectations, well, my expectations were that, I, that uh, Olathe have a central management system uh, that they could utilize and that uh, they would actually uh, work with. And uh, they, uh, they got that, and I think so, yes, it's been a uh, success. From GTT. Yeah. Uh, you know, as a vendor of these uh, hardware and software solutions, uh, our goal is to exceed expectations. And that's why it was so rewarding to work with David and his crew, because they had wonderful ideas for us and high expectations. So it was really a challenge to do better than, than they were asking. And uh, they set us high goals. And what we saw when we went to their traffic management center was that they're already using some wonderful tools. And ours fit in, in my mind, uh, hand in glove, because uh, when we put it up and we had, um, you know, David say to us, well, we'd like to get this down to a, a one-second real-time uh, polling rate, that was hard to do, but we got it there, and the reason it was so important to them is, if I understand the situation, was they wanted to see calls as they came in so that they could correlate it with their dispatching system. And then they could say, well, this is a valid call, or, well, we've got a call, but it's not really... Uh, been dispatched, so this could be a system abuser. Uh, there are ways for people to abuse the system if it's not completely coded. Now, David's done an excellent job of tightening their system down, but they want to make sure that maybe the EMS driver, let's say after they've been to the hospital, they're not going you know, to the restaurant later and they want to get there faster, just for an example. So this gives them a real finger on the pulse of the actual usage of the system. You know, whereas previously we talked about is the system functioning correctly, now the question is, is it being abused? And we believe we now have something there so that they can really see how the usage is occurring in real time. Well, moving now into our, our final segment, segment three, where we're, we're looking back, but also importantly looking to the future. And maybe the best way to start that off is with David. After all this is said and done, what do you see have been the key benefits for the Olathe Traffic Division that you've experienced and that you would share with others? Sure. I, I think from an operational perspective, uh, these types of subsystems play an integral part of an overall ATMS system. And anytime you can manage your equipment, for the most part remotely, this along with the ability to be made aware of problems when there's detector issues or other equipment, it's, it's saved us considerable man hours. And the current usage that Jim referred to and uh, knowing in near real time helps to ensure the integrity of our system as well. 
that's that's what really caused us to look at some of these systems hard was when when the uh, MERT systems and other were, were others were coming out and and it was uh, available access to almost anyone to have those type of systems and to be able to lock them down and secure our network. So uh, having access to the history logs helps us to confirm, you know, what we have just assumed in the past. When someone calls in to complain about a long wait time or getting skipped, uh, we can immediately see if they were experiencing the effects of a preemption call as a cause. Now, David, if, if someone were to come to you from a similar size city to Olathe and said that they're considering preemption in central managed software, what advice would you give them? Well, justifying preemption itself seems pretty straightforward. Uh, response times are critical in emergency services, and it's not only response times, but it's the safety of the responders themselves. If I could start a program from scratch, I would work closely with the users of the system to establish maybe some opportunities for cost sharing. And then I would also uh, make sure that whoever is responsible for operating and maintaining the systems is brought into the process early on, that they are well trained in the technology also. Um, work with your surrounding communities to develop an encoding scheme so that mutual aid efforts are maintained across, across the different jurisdictions. And for those communities that have uh, operation staff or have a functioning TOC system, to me, the software is easy to play for itself over time and reduction in the staff time required to maintain and operate the system. Dan, anything that you would add? Well, I think uh, it, it's real important, having been an engineer myself with a, a city in Overland Park, Kansas, um, I think you got to look at systems that offer uh, features, advantages, and benefits, and then you check out the history of the company that's providing the system. I think you need to look at customer service and support. Um, because uh, you don't want somebody just to drop a system on your lap and then walk away. So I think that uh, any, anybody should be looking at that. Uh, agencies should look to, to um, companies that they can trust. Okay. Now, again, we've, we've looked into the past. We've talked about advice. But now looking into the future, which is always a bit murky, but uh, things become clearer as they go along, what new technology trends are you researching uh, that you'd like to implement at some point, David? Well, I, personally, I've been beating the drum for uh, Ethernet on every single device that, that's imaginable within the traffic signal cabinet just for easy connectivity to, and that, particularly for our, our discriminators. And I've been told they're going to be out soon, so I'm really looking forward to that. And it's going to eliminate the need for some of these extra devices we currently have to use. Um, we're also going to be looking at purchasing the dual-mode discriminators. They have the ability to move uh, give us the ability to move in a direction if we decide to go with the GPS style. And then transit, in all likelihood, is going to become a user of our system as well. Uh, fortunately, the 700 series provides us the tools we need for that, for that ap application. It's just a matter of programming the discriminators with some additional settings. And, and Jim, I know you have an even clearer picture of, of what's going on in that crystal ball. Maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the, the new technology and the research that, uh, that you guys are involved with. Yeah, you're right, Bernie. Uh, you know, global traffic technologies is always trying to improve our product. And, you know, David said it to begin with, the only problem he had was with the serial devices. So what, what central management system needs is really Ethernet. And what we have to have for the old phase selectors is serial. So it's a lot more than a bump in the cable when it doesn't work. And it's another device that can fail. So the new multi-mode phase selectors that David referred to, they're coming out with Ethernet directly on the card itself, so we can go straight into it, eliminating the point of failure, uh, reducing the need for extra equipment and, and all the things that go with that. So, you know, that's a major thing, but um, let me talk a little more about the multi-mode phase selector because, as David also mentioned, you can transition from IR to a GPS-based system. And, you know, people ask themselves, well, why is GPS so important just because it's modern? Well, it is modern, it is new, but that's not the reason. It has inherently secure technologies that people can't uh, defeat. Uh, we also have the ability to precisely locate vehicles with the global, tra um, global satellites that are circling the globe. And these will tell us exactly where a vehicle is in relation to the intersection. That allows us to be very precise. And we can even do things like if the driver has his left or right turn signal on, we can forward that call to the next intersection that they'll be going to. And this lets them, uh, the, the phase selectors do things like, you know, tell the controller, well, here's a preemption that's coming your way. So now it's got more time to clear the pedestrian walks, uh, transition to uh, the best state. 
because these vehicles are able to report their estimated time of arrival rather than just, as with the old IR system, uh, a threshold as far as the infrared signal is, you know, how it's being received. So major new capabilities in terms of technology. And as David also mentioned, this is going toward transit probably in Olathe. And, you know, for fast-moving police or EMS vehicles or fire, uh, the preemption is important to get as soon as possible, but for transit, it's another ball game that if there's a green light and the bus is coming toward it, uh, persist the green if he's within range. Uh, or the, otherwise, if it's red, we don't change it to green, so doing less disruption. And that kind of control is really only possible when you have uh, GPS sort of technologies. Well, I shouldn't say it's really only possible, but it's most effective when you can uh, precisely manage your vehicles. Uh, we've got a site on the uh, west coast that has really uh, told us that, you know, in, in the northwest we have to be uh, worried about weather and your GPS system is just solid. You know, we don't have any sorts of issues with weather conditions. And that's another reason that when you use this for transit, you want to keep those buses rolling efficiently and saving carbon and, and gas. And David, I wanted to ask you as we, we get set to wrap up, how you believe the project's going to impact the citizens of Olathe? Well, Murray, I think a couple ways. Um, you know, by utilizing these types of systems, we're able to actually save staff time in these areas, and, uh, but we're also able to maintain a pretty high level of service, which is a very, very important to us here in Olathe. Uh, this translates into less requests for additional staffing needs in the long run, and most importantly, Though, to me, the response times for emergency personnel getting to where they need to go quickly and safely uh, are kept to a minimum, even in a, even in a heavy traffic situation. So if you've ever called for help and had to wait for someone, it, it can really seem like it, it's taken forever. And shaving a few minutes off of the arrival time by ensuring a well-functioning preemption system can make a difference in the outcome. Well, thank you very much, and I, I want to once again thank uh, David Kumke, the Traffic Signal Operations Super Supervisor for the City of Olathe, Kansas, Dan Wright, the owner of Mid-American Signal, as well, as well as Jim Malnati, Senior Systems Software Engineer for Global Traffic Technologies, the manufacturer of Opticom, the leader in traffic signal priority solutions. Thank you all, gentlemen.